Andy Man has no choice but to save his family from the ghosts of their past, with 82 hours left before a meteor impact, which threatens to end the world. Ale awakens from a nightmare of a tragic accident in outer space. The reality doesn't do any better as a crow disturbs him, and he sits tiredly on his bed in the middle of his messy and dull room. His mother, Rosa, prepares the same breakfast as always, so the son comments on it, which owes him a slap on the hand upon trying to grab some food. Rosa informs him about the malfunctioning television and reminds him about his failed errands from his contractors, so Ale leaves to start his workday. His colleague, Marshall, greets him, discussing the day's schedule. As they load their things into their truck, they see Ella, a woman left by her man after getting pregnant. Marshall mentions Ale liking the woman before, but he refutes it. Ale proceeds to bar to fix the TV, and the establishment owner comments about the handyman not using the ladder, despite the position of the appliance. He adds that if only he knew it was Ale who'd come, he would have put it down. The handyman ignores him and tells him there's nothing wrong with the TV, so it must have been the antenna. The reception returns with breaking news about a meteorite called Scott, which is crashing into Earth. Everyone tunes in to know more about the situation. Though powerful countries have joined forces to destroy or change its course, all efforts have failed. The communication satellite also crashed to Earth this morning due to meteorite particles in the atmosphere, which is just one of the after-effects of the impending doom. Scott is also deemed five times bigger than the one that hit Earth millions of years ago, annihilating the dinosaurs. Within the next few hours, fragments of the meteorites will shower, and the final impact will be in 82 hours. Rosa becomes more anxious as news streams about accidents related to the meteorite are broadcasted. The mother spots the news about the riots and detainees taking control of the penitentiaries as the authorities leave their post after the announcement. Moments later, Ale approaches his mother, who decides to head to the residence of her firstborn, Tomas, since he left his kids with Lara, his wife. Ale tries to remind her it's a chaotic time, but his mother won't hear anything. Rosa heads out, witnessing the panic-stricken town as everyone hardly tries to escape somewhere. Meanwhile, Ale feels guilty leaving his mom alone, so he follows after her, only to see everyone evacuating. The handyman asks the townsfolk Damien about their destination, and he informs them that they're trying to go to the mountains and hide in the tunnel. Ale calls for his mom amidst the chaos when a gunshot is heard. Rosa realizes the sound came from a friend's house, so she hurries there. The mother opens the neighbor's door and discovers the lifeless bodies of the family. She finds Urbano, her friend, sobbing due to what he's done to his own family. Rosa begs him to stop his plans, but the man resumes taking his own life. Upon hearing the final shot, Ale yells his mom's name, and the Rosa heads to the staircase, mourning the lives lost. The son drags his mom away and drives her to Tomas's house while commenting on how useless the people's evacuation attempt is, since there's nowhere to go. Finally, they arrive at their destination and Rosa anxiously calls for her grandchildren. Raquel, Clarita, and Nico welcome them and the grandma embraces them tightly, asking Lara's whereabouts, and the kids inform her that she's shopping in town. They head inside to see Emilio trying to fix the television, so Rosa asks if he's fixed it, but the grandson confesses they've seen nothing in two days. Ale confirms that they don't know anything until now, but Rosa stops her son from disclosing the truth and lies that the summer is supposed to be the hottest, so they can't go out. Clarita gives her a radio and adds that they can use it, but Rosa takes it to the bathroom and breaks it, telling the kids she clumsily dropped it. Ale looks at her in disbelief, and the grandmother asks them if they still have supplies, volunteering to buy some for them with their uncle. Afterward, Rosa and Ale drive away while the children wave happily at them. Ale confronts her about lying to the children, but his mom is determined to keep it a secret and instructs him to drive to town. Upon returning home, Rosa reads the old newspaper clips about the capture of a transgressor, Soro, and stresses of his return. Ale declares that the transgressor isn't returning since if he's him, having three days of freedom after 20 years of imprisonment means he'll live his life to the fullest. Rosa worriedly tells him that Soro swears to make Tomas pay, so he'll come back for his family for revenge. However, Ale remarks that his brother's heroism made their mother destroy his life. Rosa argues that Ale was a kid at the time and Tomas is a hero who saved the townspeople. But the youngest insists that it doesn't change the fact that his life is ruined because he's been neglected all his life. The mother refutes this and notes about her youngest being similar to his father, so Ale stops her from talking. Still, Rosa worries that Sora will arrive soon and asks Ale if he won't do anything, soliciting her youngest's disbelief. 
Shortly after, she goes around town to ask for help regarding Soros' return, but not even Sheriff Atienza nor the townspeople are willing to help since there are more pressing matters than that. Rosa disappointedly blames everyone for not helping Tomas since he's the one who saved them from Soro. A priest volunteers to accompany her, but she refuses as she sarcastically comments that the people need him more in the church. Meanwhile, Marshall throws a rock into Ales' window and asks for help since he got into trouble with some gang. The handyman refuses to help and declares that he's a dead man. Then he sees his mother preparing shells and a rifle. He humorlessly jokes about it, loading the weapon with salt canisters, but Rosa's gold blinds her and heads out alone. Aled drives after her and urges his mom to ride the truck instead of walking alone. In a gas station, an unknown man stops to refill his tank. The owner approaches him with a rifle and threatens him to pay. After a few moments of silence, gunshots resonate in the area. Simultaneously, meteorite fragments have crashed, taking people's lives and the situation worsens. Moments later, the mother and son arrive at Tomas's residence. Emilio insistently fixes the antenna and Rosa frantically tells him to stop, afraid that he'll discover the truth. Nico sees coverage of the explosion on the TV, so Grandma rushes to see it. Fortunately, Emilio drops the antenna and Rosa sighs in relief. Then she heads to see Raquel, who's excitedly preparing herself for a trip to town to meet her crush. Rosa remarks she doesn't know them, but Raquel tells her she does because he's Urbano's son. As bad memories flash in the grandma's mind, she kisses her granddaughter. Meanwhile, Atienza, driving away with his wife and baby, sees a patrol car by the road and the unknown man. Unfortunately, the man reveals himself with a wrench. Realizing the danger, Atienza drives backward as the man charges at him. His vehicle crashes into the parked patrol car and the unknown man jumps on his hood, breaking his windshield. At Tomasa's residence, the family has finished eating dinner aside from Ale, who's only consumed half of his food. Clarita asks him if he's done, but he keeps shedding the chicken nonchalantly, so Rosa repeats the question. Ale pushes his plate away and mentions the ice cream he's seen in the fridge. Clarita informs him it's for her birthday in eight days, so the uncle meaningfully comments to consume it. Rosa, understanding his message, stands away from the table and checks up on Raquel, who's waiting diligently for her date. The teenager angrily stands, unaware of her crush's fate. As they prepare for bed, Ale is instructed to stay in Emilio's room, but he declines, so Nico, who wants to be close to his uncle, volunteers to invite him. Nico shoots a series of whys toward Ale, including his fear of heights. The uncle avoids the conversation while the boy urges him to read his storybook, unaware that Ale is covering an adult magazine behind it, so he makes up a story, but the boy isn't taking any of it. Late that night, Rosa loads her rifle and heads to stand guard. Then she inspects the area, sensing a presence, and hears some rustling and a yell. She finds a man being hanged by the tree and screams in despair. In fear, she runs away but stops before yelling a heartbreaking no. The following day, Clarita looks for her grandma. Upon learning of her disappearance, Ale and the kids search for her. The handyman discovers a rope by the trees and scouts the area. Moments later, he discovers Rosa's body by the river and everyone mourns her demise. Afterward, Raquel does her best to prepare her grandma's body and the younger kids speculate about the cause of her passing. Ale cuts them off, knowing the reason behind it, and they all head out to the fields to bury the matriarch. The girls prepare a cross, but the uncle throws it away, so Nico hands over a flower which he accepts. Raquel insists on praying for Rosa, but Ale rejects it and tells the kids to go home. Meanwhile, the unknown man has already arrived in town. Afterward, Ale places stakes around the house and instructs the kids not to cross the line, or they'll be grounded. Annoyed, Emilio and Raquel head inside while Clarita and Nico remain curious. The following day, Ale wakes up due to some noise and finds an unknown man in the front yard with the children surrounding him. The uncle confronts the stranger, but the man introduces himself as Lucio, a friend of Tomas. Unconvinced, Ale asks for an ID, but Emilio interjects to comment if he'll ask for a birth certificate. This annoys him more and he tells Lucio to leave, but the stranger remains undisturbed and takes a portable chair to make a point he isn't going despite the handyman being armed with a rifle. Ale instructs the children to go inside, and he follows after. He anxiously guards the door while the kids remain clueless about the dangers. After hearing some noise, the uncle opens the door, only to see Lucio washing his hands casually. The children take the chance to head out and cool themselves since it's scorching. 
Defying his uncle, Emilia approaches the stranger, who asks if Ale is ever unarmed. The uncle yells at his nephew as a warning and he moves away from the man. Then, Lucio stands on top of the car, staring at the cement factory gloomily. That evening, while preparing for dinner, Raquel talks to someone outside the house, stating to ignore their uncle's behavior since he's been weird ever since, even jumping out a window when he was young, which almost took his life, so he's now afraid of heights. Ale rushes outside to catch Lucio, but the man is in his car. He enters the house and instructs the stranger to move his vehicle away since it's disturbing. Moments later, the car is parked a bit farther. Ale inspects the empty car and discovers broken dolls inside. Shortly after, he anxiously returns home but finds Raquel gone. He asks the kids where she is, but they ignore him, so he yells for her. Raquel responds that she's coming down, so he instructs the children to keep all openings locked and to stay away from Lucio. Raquel arrives all dolled up and Alain asks why she's looking this way. The teenager declares that she wants them to see her beauty, which doesn't sit well with the uncle since he knows it's not for them but for Lucio. He loses patience and pushes her while yelling to change her clothes. Ale tells everyone to go to bed, but Clarita mentions dinner, making the men more agitated. Unexpectedly, Lucio enters and winks at the kids. He confronts the uncle for venting on the children, but Ale won't take any of it and points his rifle at the stranger, threatening him to leave. As he escorts him out, they see the northern lights, which is due to the impending doom. The stranger asks him why he's fooling the children, especially upon seeing Emilio watching them from afar. Ale has had enough of him this time and forces him to drive away. The following day, the uncle wakes up and remembers Rosa's comment that he was so young back then that he doesn't remember the situation regarding Soro and his brother. While eating breakfast, the awkward atmosphere worsens, especially with the apparent dislike from Emilio and Raquel. Nico tells his uncle that others say he's crazy. After moments of silence, he asks the kids if they want to visit the town to play in arcades. After breakfast, Clarita and Nico enter the truck, but Emilio and Raquel refuse to go, stating that it'd be a relief if they won't see him again. So, Ale drags the two to the barn and asks again if they'll come. The siblings stand firm in their decision, so the uncle locks them in. Ale tricks the younger siblings by pretending to play a game. He puts blindfolds on them to prevent seeing the terrible sight before them. Though the kids comment on how tranquil it is, they're distracted when the riddle game begins. Ale brings them to the arcade and opens the cash register. He then instructs them to wait quietly while he checks his house. Immediately, he rushes home to see the newspaper articles about Soro. He discovers that the transgressor who targets children by hanging them is Lucio himself, and Tomas is the one who caught him in the cement factory with the last victim. Meanwhile, Emilio and Raquel are startled by someone trying to open the chained barn doors. In town, Ale hurries to return to the arcade when he notices Ella, who seems to be the last person leaving. He approaches her and tries to confess his feelings, but no word comes out. He leaves but abruptly stops and he turns around and kisses her, despite the woman not responding. Afterward, Ale blindfolds the kids again and turns on loud music in the truck to prevent them from hearing any unpleasant commotion. However, the uncle stops by the train tracks upon seeing Raquel tied to a chair. The teenager struggles and cries as Ale calms her down while releasing her. Suddenly, Lucio hits him on the head and he collapses. The transgressor angrily kicks him, saying he should have hanged Ale to a higher tree. Fragments of his memory return while Lucio beats him and reveals that Ale was supposed to be his last victim if only Tomas didn't rescue him many years ago, which led to his capture. Lucio takes the rifle and shoots Raquel before driving the truck with Clarita and Nico in it, who's clueless about the events due to the blasting music and the blindfolds. As the truck leaves, Ale crawls toward Raquel to wake her up, and reassures her that the shell loaded in the rifle is a salt container. Once the teenager regains consciousness, the uncle instructs her to return home. Meanwhile, Emilio hangs upside down in a sewage canal where a faucet is left open with water filling the chamber. On the other hand, Ale follows the train track and sees his vehicle in the tunnel. Unfortunately, the kids are nowhere to be found, so he finds a flashlight. As he inspects the area, he sees Clarita's lifeless body and a note from Lucio, pointing his location to the cement factory. Moments later, Emilio is nearly submerged. Luckily, Raquel arrives home just in time and realizes her older brother is inside the canal. Simultaneously, Ale rushes to the factory and he finds Nico on the higher floor. Despite his fear of heights, he climbs the ladder to save his nephew while Lucio keeps throwing things at him to frighten him more. 
Before the cable holding the ladder splits, Alain successfully reaches the floor where Nico is. As he scans the place, Lucio hits his head with a metal and beats him up, venting his frustrations. Alain fights back, landing a few kicks and punches on him, but the transgressor prevails, leaving the handyman crawling on the floor. Suddenly, a meteorite fragment passes by and Lucio watches in amazement. The impact blows up the factory and the windows shatter. Alain sees that Lucio accidentally landed on a hook due to the explosion, so he takes the chance to beat him up and pushes him off, leaving him hanging, just like he did to his victims. Hours later, Ale and Nico return to Tomas's residence. Fortunately, Raquel and Emilio welcome them. Emilio asks where Clarita is and Ale tells them Sheriff Atienza will escort her later. Relieved, Emilio and Raquel smile as their uncle urges them to go inside the house. Ale stays outside and stares at the surroundings, smiling bitterly upon knowing that doom is near. Soon, he fiddles with his guitar and spots Ella's car arriving. The two approach each other while smiling. They greet hello for the first and last time, seconds before Scott crashes into Earth, destroying everything. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.